Hi. Today's video is again about the AC Powerwall project and is about the last step which is missing to make it in my eyes a perfect product. What happened until now? The power wall is more or less finished. Uh, the controller which is built in is the version 2 controller and I explained it in one of the videos about the final testing of software. There's one thing is missing what makes it actually perfect. I was running the power wall now for weeks uh, in offline mode so I wanted to see if there's anything inside the code or on the hardware of the controller which would make it reset but it is still running without any issues for weeks now and no no reset at all so the only thing left what makes the controller not uh, working continuously during the day is the internet so when when you connect the, the power wall to the internet at the moment whenever the internet connection is uh, stopped then the controller will reset and the reason why it will reset has to do with the so-called internal watchdog on the uh, Arduino and internal watchdog on the Arduino on the Mega is uh, designed that you can basically monitor your microcontroller for a maximum of 8 seconds uh, if the microcontroller does not uh, react within 8 seconds then the internal watchdog would reset the system so unfortunately the, the blink libraries which are actually responsible in our case to keep the internet connection and uh, send the data to the web if the internet uh, is disconnected the functions need more than 8 seconds to kind of uh, establish the solution what, what the microcontroller should do next and so before the microcontroller is freed again to do or what, what it shall do it is actually resetting which is not what I, what I want the only solution how to uh, fix the problem is not to use the internal watchdog but instead to uh, use an external watchdog and this is a, another piece of hardware and we will actually make it by ourselves at the end of this video we will order a new version 3 controller it will co uh, include a connection to an external watchdog which we will in this video also uh, built on a breadboard and test and there will be a Ethernet connection and there will be uh, three connectors for uh, temperature sensors so this will be the temperature sensors which you can uh, place anywhere in your build wherever you want and so additionally to the already ambient temperature and humidity sensor there will be also uh, some uh, so you also have a chance to, to monitor temperature somewhere maybe in between cells or whatever right I will show you uh, on the screen uh, about uh, what we are going to do and then later on we will uh, build the circuit of the watchdog and test if the functions are working as uh, desired. Last features which will be on the version 3 board there will be an Ethernet connection, then we can use uh, three up to three of uh, these sort of sensors which are just uh, thermistors and the external watchdog as this one is a true hole version but we are going to order at the end will be a SMD version so here this is the final uh, layout of the version 3 board 
we will have here the breakout board from the watchdog. In this corner it will just be above the resistors there from the mode switch. Then in this corner on the up is the Ethernet connector. It is a SPI device and here in between uh, below the two display connectors, I2C connectors, there will be the three temperature probe connectors and every of them is uh, in a series to a fixed resistor so it's basically creating a, a voltage divider and by taking measurements on the midpoint you can then calculate the resistance of this bridge and, and this can be then translated to a, a temperature. Right, so this will be the board. And now one thing we need to make is, as I said, uh, the watchdog. So the concept is uh, introduced here by Ralph Bacon. I will put a link in the, the description. And he also took this uh, circuit from somebody else and is explaining how it works. I modified the circuit a little bit because this circuit is actually uh, the watchdog is supplying the power here to the microcontroller and in case that the microcontroller is hung the complete uh, power would be shut to the microcontroller and reset that way and the circuit is also designed to be a, a short interval watchdog so uh, with this uh, circuit here with these components uh, the interval would be somewhere between 5 and 10 seconds. What we are interested in is uh, something much longer than 8 seconds. So I will actually uh, aim for 20 seconds and uh, let's see if 20 seconds is good enough. Maybe it should be even more, 30 or 40 seconds. So that the uh, uh, libraries from Blink do have enough time to re-establish an internet connection before the microcontroller really uh, shut down. This is the circuit I do. Uh, so we are not switching the power from the microcontroller. We are just pulling down, in case of a reset, we are pulling down the reset pin. So a little bit different concept, but uh, it makes uh, this uh, breakout board, then this watchdog, uh, very universal. It doesn't matter what kind of uh, microcontroller you connect. It typically every microcontroller uh, can be reset by pulling down the reset pin to low, and this will be done in this case. So the watchdog is uh, getting its power from the microcontroller, and uh, in case that the microcontroller is hung, uh, the reset pin of the microcontroller will be put, pulled down. Uh, here is uh, my uh, capacitor which is responsible for the timing. Uh, initially I will try the 22 microfarads and what I've also added is an inline resistor because this, uh, with every reset pulse from the microcontroller, the capacitor is shorted to ground and discharged via a MOSFET here and in my opinion I think you know if, if the capacitor is bigger uh, and you every few seconds you short it uh, over a MOSFET uh, I think that the MOSFET uh, will probably not live too long. Uh, that's why I added a resistor there to uh, kind of limit the, the uh, current at the short. Otherwise the same it is based on the NE555 uh, timer chip all the circuit and the switching IC is as well a N and P a type MOSFET combination I see so at the output we will have a LD and it will 
show when the basically the LED goes dark. It also means that the uh, reset pin was activated. So this here, this circuit, we will build on the breadboard and test. For the test, I am using the Nano because it's a breadboard friend friendly, and this can all be perfectly used. Okay, so at the end of the day, it should then look like this. This would be the a breakout board, which we will order from the PCB manufacturer. And I will use on this one SMD type components. Uh, the order will be penalized. This is a very small breakout board. It's uh, just about four by two centimeters. In, and so we can order uh, eight piece on one panel and which will make the order quite cheap. Another PCB uh, which will also go in production is basically an uh, adapter from the Mega uh, pins which are on the controller to a Nano. So if somebody only have a small uh, project can still use the same controller but uh, a smaller and cheaper uh, microcontroller. This can still switch all six relays. Uh, then the mode switch will basically only have two positions. There are still I2C, SPI and Wi-Fi on board. So it's uh, quite a good alternative if just a handful of uh, functions are needed but the same controller board can be used for it. What we need for our build is a microcontroller. In this case I use the Nano because it's breadboard friendly. We need the NE555 timer IC and this one is a AP4511 GED uh, double MOSFET unit, but on the uh, SMD version it will be a different one. It will be the FDS8958 uh, Alpha. This is our main capacitor which is uh, responsible for timing, so we can then try to use a bigger one, smaller one, whatever uh, we like to achieve what we need to do. This is the uh, 2N7000 MOSFET small component then the LED and now we need uh, capacitors uh, filter capacitors we will just put there and uh, a lot of different resistors. The schematic is on my computer screen so uh, I'm going to just follow the schematics and build it up. This here is a sketch uh, we are going to use to test our setup. It is the standard blink uh, sketch from Arduino IDE and I have uh, just changed the pins. We will use pin number three as the reset signal and uh, in the setup, at the first start, we uh, start writing uh, that the microcontroller uh, is restarted. And in the loop then, so we, we are setting the pin to high just for 50 milliseconds. And then we write pulse send, and then we are waiting, uh, setting the pin low and waiting for five seconds. So every five seconds, a short pause and if we remove uh, then the wire from the pulse generator, basically, uh, then after some time expires, the microcontroller needs to reset. Okay, very simple. And we can then also, of course, a monitor via the serial monitor and read what the microcontroller is just doing. Right, so I have finished the circuit here on the breadboard looks like a mess of course okay the nano 
and the watchdog timer is running. Green LED means the power is on on the reset pin, but the reset pin I did not connect it now to not to disturb this setup at the moment. And here on the voltmeter, I'm taking the voltage there at the uh, timer capacitor. So you see it is cycling up and then resetting on the serial monitor of the Arduino you can see pull send and uh, at that time the voltage will drop down because of the reset because it shorted over the MOSFET to show you now what happens without a pin uh, so the reset signal is not coming and now the voltage will rise, 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 rise and it will eventually then uh, reach the trigger trigger is set somewhere around 3 volts but now the problem is that the voltmeter is actually taking uh, too much power of this I will remove the voltmeter, the multimeter and now we can actually see when the trigger will be reached and the LED should go off and it's off. So this would be now the pin drawn to zero and the microcontroller would be reset. We can try this. So I will now also put the reset, activate that one and now we can look at the serial monitor and wait until it's showing us that it restarted. Okay, the LED just went off. Oh, I'm glad I found a solution now for my problem. So now I added an extra MOSFET circuit. So a small MOSFET there N7, 2N7000 like the other one which is uh, connected right after the first n-channel MOSFET of the IC and this one is now extra dedicated to pull down just to short out the uh, reset pin of the microcontroller and it's working very nice you can see that here on the serial monitor and you see uh, if the pin is not uh, if there is no pulse on the pin it's about 30 seconds so every time you see pulse sent it's 5 seconds and then comes the reset of the nano see now the light is out we have uh, 0 volts this is uh, at the MOSFET at the reset pin and it will restart and here it is right, nice so I'm going to change this on the PCB so I need to only add an extra a MOSFET and that's it and the watchdog timer is perfectly working like that okay and here is now the updated schematics so I have reduced this part, the second stage of the uh, MOSFET IC is only there anymore for showing uh, the LED and the, on the first stage uh, now we have another MOSFET here and this one is then pulling the uh, pin, reset pin from the Arduino down to ground so this is uh, really a very strong pull and the only thing in the way is basically the uh, pull up resistor of the microcontroller itself and this is working now very very well all the other values here I also now updated and in the 
PCB layout. Now we have this extra MOSFET here also. And this is now the final uh, version of the breakout board. And we can order uh, this way. Okay, we are now going to order these three boards. And uh, I have used Easy EDA for designing uh, these PCBs. So I will also use the same uh, company more or less to produce the uh, PCBs. I tell you the name. It is GLC PCB, but uh, this video is not sponsored. Okay, so the first one is the version 3 port. What we need to do is click fabrication file, a Gerber file. Would you like to make a design rule check? I did it before. Let's do it. Again, I made all the uh, controller boards in green color. So let's say it green this time too but I only need five, two layers, and they say 8.8 dollars. .8 and I'll click order at GLC PCB. Okay, the file is processed. Okay, we're checking the details, it's a two layer board, dimensions, five Ps. I will just save it to the card because we have another one. We go back to Easy EDA, take the next one, the watchdog file, fabrication, this time as well, five is the quantity, but each uh, order will contain eight. Uh, of these breakout boards, so it, at the end we will get a 40 pieces order again. So for this one, because I never used the offer yet, because my controller boards are bigger than 10 by 10 uh, centimeters, this is the first time I can use the special order. So uh, the price for these ones will only be $2 which is great. I will use blue color for this one. And again, save to cart. I will go back to ED, Easy EDA again and uh, let's do the last one. So I remember we have to save it before we do anything. So let's save it and again produce the Gerber file. Design rule check first. And this one I want to also make in another color. So let's do the white one this time. Okay, no more special offer. So this one costs $4. And let's also save this to the card. Now I'm going to open my card and we can see our three orders here. The adapter, the watchdog and the version 3 board. And we can go and check out for this. Okay, the order is done. Payment around $31 is sent out. We will receive 40 breakout boards from this one, from the watchdog, 5 of the new controller and 10 of the adapters. Let's round this up as a summary what have we done today. We have designed a new product more or less, a new circuit. We have finalized three PCB designs and sent this to the manufacturer. Now we only have to wait about two to three weeks. I also have two other components and then we can build these items. So I hope you found it interesting and uh, please, as always, if you liked the video, if you like my content, give me a thumbs up. 
comment, subscribe to my channel and I see you next time.